We're redoing the fantasy football draft five weeks into the season, the first two rounds, going through it all today. Some news, some Thursday night preview. Don't miss a minute. Subscribe right there. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> that was great. You crushed that. I can't do it, guys. I've got asthma. I've got asthma. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I got the black lung, <laughs> Pa. Welcome in, one and all. Yeah, see? It's showtime. The lights come on yeah. and things start working. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm back and Jason's out the door. <laughs> yeah. Too many injuries, too many injured reserve situations for me, so I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, welcome in one and all. We got a fun show today. We do have the whole gang back together for now, and... Uh, we're doing a fantasy draft redo on today's show. Excited about that. Jason did allude to, uh, I was going to pull it up here, some of his starts of the week. Um, looks like at quarterback you're going Space Mountain. Yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate because it will be closed. Running back. Ooh, that's, you don't want to be without a quarterback. Yeah. Running back in credit coaster. Mm -hmm. uh, your wide receiver is uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. That's right. Flies. And then the tight end is Rise of the Resistance. Mm -hmm. So that is, J if you want to start those guys, you want to parlay those. <laughs> Put them in your lineup. I guess I, if you parlay, leave out the quarterback. Yeah, leave out the quarterback. He won't How playing. are you calling Rise of the Resistance the tight end? I just It feels I like an insult. Put yeah. names in there, man. I want That's Travis Kelsey, okay? I, no, the tight end's that Peter Pan ride. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's the average tight end, but uh, I wanted but a difference Peter, maker. Peter Pan's great. It just takes forever to get Spe on. Speaking of Travis Kelsey, I was uh, I was looking at like he hasn't quite felt like Travis Kelsey this year, and the numbers are the numbers are good. Well, he also missed a game. Well, and he and he's banged up for a second time yeah. now. Um, and all of the kind of like peripheral metrics, the A dot, those numbers are down. And so I saw some of those numbers this morning, and I thought to myself, well, I have Travis Kelsey in Dynasty. And I have him in the, our league of record. And I'm going to burn down with that ship. Yes. I am not. There's nothing to do right now. I thought about going out and, and being like, oh, I'll put something together for L Laporta in a dynasty. But then I realized, like, I, you just, you're trading certainty. Laporta's not getting, what are we averaging here? 9.3 targets a game. Like, I, know I know. Laporta's been fantastic, and he's. He is certainly outproducing when it comes to touchdowns, but Travis Kelsey, tight end, four, two, eleven, and four. Yeah, I mean, he's it, he's it, still been well, playing. and he had eleven targets last week, ten yeah. catches. He scored a touchdown, and I'm just saying, like, if you're in my boat and you want to do what I'm doing, then just just squeeze that, just squeeze every drop of juice out of that tight yes. end and move on afterwards. Yeah, if I had Kelsey, I'd I'd be holding on. Um, all right, there you go. We've got uh, a lot to talk about today. I said we're going to do a redo of the fantasy football draft. I mean, I'm sure it'll be the exact players we drafted <laughs> before. Now, is this saying if we were to draft starting in week five? Yes. Yeah. So, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. that. Yeah. Well, he's going he's he's to go in. someplace, but maybe not as high as he would have going maybe. on IR. <laughs> yeah. uh, neither will, uh, I don't know, Devin A. Chan. <laughs> How you doing with that? Jason doing is <laughs> Jason is like he He's hasn't breathed. Red. He hasn't breathed in a while. Yeah. Um great. We'll talk about that in a minute. You were so close. Your process was very correct. Yeah. Your process Pro was process over results. Was perfect. But now you can just focus on the fact Zach Moss will continue to outproduce him. <laughs> yeah. Had you thought about that? Oh, I have thought the, the Zach Moss <laughs> HN thing is delightful because it, the you know, the reason I made that trade for you was to acquire oh it was a home run if you hadn't dropped a chan i wouldn't have i wouldn't have 
offered that trade. I needed to pick up HN, and then it looked really, really stupid because HN was nothing. He's only and, averaging like 13.7 a carry or something. Zach Moss was awesome, and then it looked like the most brilliant move ever. I have a top five running back rest of season, a superstar, sensational keeper asset, while Zach Moss goes poof. Zach Moss can't go poof. He's the best player of all time. I don't even know what to do with him. Did you guys talk about this? We did. We we did talk about it. What do you him. do with Zach Moss? He's going to be... You make a mistake, just like you did last week. I mean, I know some people... You make were, a mistake? Yeah, some people were backed into playing him last week, but the vast majority of people did not play him, so he went off on their bench, which I don't blame anyone for that. The process makes sense that you would not have played him last week. Now you have no idea what to do, so if the majority of people start him this week, he will be the primary backup. Yeah, and it, it's it's one of the worst. Like, you want the clear path. And you think about, like, I'm looking at my team, and I'm going, well, did you just get some more news or something? Yeah. What are you doing? I need running backs, and it appears that Mike uh, – I got them all, baby! He paid yes. – oh, damn. Oh, I paid the Viper. So our waivers just went Yeah, through. you got Foreman, too? Yes, I did. He's playing me. Come he finally on. spent up. Them. He finally wasn't a cheapskate on the waiver wire. I got Antonio Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, uh, oh, yeah. Well, Mike, Mike's playing me. This is like do or die. Oh, man. Guys. I mean, I don't know. DiMarcato. I don't $42. know. $42. I don't know if people really care about it, but 42 in the second highest bid was 39. I feel. Like a million bucks right now. I upped mine to what 30 this What a weird world. What a weird world. <laughs> you're, right. like, you're not all in on DiMarcado? <laughs> He's about to save my team. I sure hope not. All <laughs> right, we are moving on. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. I'm changing my answer, guys. I'm hungry for more DiMarcado. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I paid a dollar for Salvin Ahmed. Yeah, uh, he was my backup option. So I got a discount versus DiMarcado. <laughs> um, all right. Who could be way better? Oh, I know. I know. I'm hoping that's the case. All right. We are talking hungry for more. We're looking at players that have, you know, we've seen the flashes. We've seen the nibbles. We're looking for more from these guys, expecting more. For me, it is Logan Thomas tied in for the Washington Commanders. Um, I have been on Logan Thomas since the first week of the season, and here's the deal: we've seen this be enemy offense. It is offensive <laughs> to me. I mean, sure. it, it is not a consolidation of targets to their most talented players, Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. It is a target distribution across many bodies, but the one real consistent target monster so far has been Log Logan Thomas. And I, it's. It's unbelievable. If you've not been in fantasy football or, you know, like a close follower, I guess, of like Logan Thomas's career, he was already older. He had like this kind of – he had a real breakout season as, as a tight end, and then his knee was destroyed, like destroyed. And he's 32. So like this was a – over the age of 30, his knee just was absolutely wrecked. And he's back. Like this is an incredible story. Well, and he's look he's looked good for the most part. He's averaging six or more targets a game. He is a red zone threat uh every single time they're down there. And uh he's got a target share of twenty six percent right now. It, it's uh it's great. He's a tight end seven. And I still think he's cheap because you know, when a player like that uh dealt with injury, got knocked out of that game, he scored a touchdown in so that lowers the numbers over the course of the year. I think you can still go and get him, and I think you could – I mean, this is a more consistent option than probably anybody you have Yeah, he's, if you don't have a top-tier guy. A lot of times if you want to know like the, how how the world is valuing a player, you can look at like uh, you know DraftKings pricing because you know, they're trying to aim to say what a player is going to do and what people want to pay for. Uh, you know, Logan Thomas is only 3500 this week, so – He's he's not someone that I think you have to pay up for. You're not going to pay a ton on the waiver wire if you try to get him in a trade. He won't cost you anything, um, and he's been very good. I mean, most people are looking for tight end help. I think that's a the, that's a really nice pick. Um, 
My player that I'm hungry for more, I'm hungry for a lot more because he has hungry for anything hungry for anything i'm just hungry i'm in fact i'm famished because famished for more <laughs> because ramondre stevenson has done very very little but i had a plan and i've stuck to that plan this you plan did. came three weeks ago when he had a terrible awful game against the incredible new york jets defense and i said you know what I'm not worried about him. Now, he's got a couple of bad matchups. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until after he has to face the incredible Dallas Cowboys defense and then the great New Orleans Saints rush defense where he's going to suck and he's going to suck and then I'm going to trade for him. And he did. And I did. He and, suck sucked. And the point of <laughs> trading for him, because I, I, you know, it's like I, I, I want the Foot Clan to, you know, if you're, if you're coming along on the ride with me, I want you to have the right context here. I had someone message saying, oh, no, I just traded Mostert for – for Ramondre, it's like, well, I mean, like the point here is to trade cheap. Yeah, Mostert's like a top five back right now. I would, I would, I love to have Mostert, but uh, for instance, the trade that I made for him in our league, uh, we're a keeper league, so it was a, a three six swap. So it's, that's basically it's it's the exact same as a sixth round and a ninth round swap in next year's draft. And J.K. or J.K. Dobbins, J.K. Dobbins replacement, uh, Justice Hill. So that's what I traded for Ramondre Stevenson. Now he's got the Las Vegas Raiders this coming week. We saw A.J. Dillon have a fine game against the Raiders. Then Buffalo, who lost half their defense, and the Dolphins coming up. So I, I think his world opens up. I'm very hungry for some more Ramondre Stevenson, and I hope uh, that things go to plan. The most depressing part of that, I mean, there's a lot of depressing parts of Mac Jones. Who is going to be starting that news yep, broke? We not changing anything. It's always good but the, when you're a starting quarterback. They have to confirm he is, in fact, the starting quarterback. The worst part to me is the uh, there is like there's a lower floor to the to both Zeke and Ramondre than we ever thought possible because they aren't throwing them the football. Exactly. Like the last four weeks, both of those players. I looked this up earlier this morning. Zeke is on pace for 29 receptions. Ramondre is on pace for 25. If you if you pace out the last four weeks for this hapless offense. So it is a bet. I mean, Jason, I'm not going to doubt your process here. Um, we'll see what the results are. I'm not enthusiastic because I because of the way they're distributing volume there. And he's looked terrible. Oh, just egregious. I mean, this is why if you're going to trade for him, do it on the cheap. Yes. It's you you're 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 giving away some fodder to take the shot that he comes back to form. The, the managers of Ramondre who are dealt with so this, upset. they're out. They're all yeah, UT. They, they, yeah, they, they will not start him this week. I don't care how good the matchup is. If you've had him the last three weeks in your lineup, you are putting anyone in the lineup instead of him. I, I think that's the wrong decision, um, so that's why you can get him very cheap. I went after him too. I went after Ramondre. I sent a much cheaper trade than you did, so I was a little upset uh, when I saw a trade for Ramondre go through. I was like, what I did it, and then it was <laughs> and it was you because you're a freaking turd. Uh, but the there was talk of this week. It's real. I mean, it's ambiguous, so it's read into it however you want to. But talking of like we're going to change the offense essentially. Like you know, I'm I'm filling in blanks here, but it's like they have to do something different. And my hope is they look at the success that they when they were having success. It was Ramondre had a 17% target share. This guy gets it done for you in the passing game, and he's at about I think he's at a 10% right now. Uh, mentioned this on the, on the show earlier in the week of that's why Ramondre just his value is not there. He's he doesn't come on the ground for him. It comes through the air, and I don't know why they aren't utilizing him more in that fashion. But I think there is a chance that we we see a, a turn this weekend. Yeah, that would be really nice. Week one was the best that the uh, Patriots offense looked against Philadelphia Eagles right out the oh, gate. Oh, weird. Why? What happened in that game? And he had six targets, six receptions. Let's get back to business. All right. Mike, you're hungry for I'm more. I'm hungry for more Jordan Addison. It is oh, time. Yeah, baby. The first round rookie pick through five weeks, he is the wide receiver 28. That includes a game of uh, zero. Uh, it's pretty hard to get worse than that. It's not impossible, but 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 it's it's pretty hard to be worse than that. Unfortunately, Justin Jefferson hurt. We have has they have they put him on the IR? 
That hasn't happened yet. Uh, oh yeah, they yeah, are putting him yes, on. They IR. are okay. Okay, that got announced. They they have not done it. Oh, they just they said we're going right. to do and, it. Oh, yeah, uh huh. They we needed to wait guys. for waivers to run. Right. Gotcha. Uh, that's a twenty-seven percent target share for Justin Jefferson. They the targets have to go somewhere. Yes, the news came out yesterday of well, KJ Osborne is going to go right into the Justin Jefferson role. Okay, that's fine. I don't think the targets are going to continue to flow to that position if it's K.J. Osborne as the replacement. Osborne certainly gets a bump, but it's we've seen what Jordan Addison can do. He is his short area speed, and, he's, and he has top end speed too, but he's just, he is a different level of a player. He gets a huge opportunity now. We get Chicago this week allowing the most passing, or they have allowed the most passing yards. So I'm hungry, man. I want to see what Jordan Addison can do now that their hand is forced to get him on the field even more. No team in the NFL passes the football at a higher rate than the Minnesota Vikings thus far through five weeks. 66% of the time, which if you want to know the – do you want to guess the team that passes the very least, the lowest percentage? Ooh, passes the – 42%. Uh, is it – the, it's not Atlanta. Uh, yeah, the Falcons would have been my the, answer, but not they, Atlanta. Threw, they no. threw quite a bit recently. The best team in football. The the Philadelphia Eagles? The San Francisco 49ers. Or the 49ers. San, the yes, San Francisco of 49ers throw the ball 42% yeah. of the time. Yeah, they're just super so, effective with Addison, it. Addison, yeah, I mean, this is his time. I'm facing him. Again, I'm facing you, Mike, and you have Jordan Addison in your Don't lineup. Don't forget about DeMarcado. Oh, I, I was much more. He's going to destroy you. Hmm. No? Mike is riding yeah. a Dude. weird forty-two dollar Demarcado high right now. I when you have missed out on running back after running back after running back, you missed out because you're a cheapskate. Yeah, and you decided to spend up and you spent appropriately uh, yes. to get him. Yeah, I'm not sure it's appropriate. I I I think it is. I I upped my bid this morning. I'm kind of in on Demarcado. You know, he's got four 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 speed. He's two hundred fifteen pounds. Um. At that size, that's a great weight-adjusted speed score. Uh, I know he's an undrafted free agent, but he he looked good last game, and they officially put James Conner on the IR, so you're going to be without him for a while. It will be an interesting ride for me because I am I have been so uh, vocally opposed to Keontae Ingram, who he's dealing with the neck injury, and there is a there is a world where Ingram comes back and they're like, well, no, you were the guy who was on the team. You're now the lead back. That could happen. I just think that. DeMarcado, what I've seen in just that short amount that he played this past week is, no, that that's the best running back option that the team has right now. You want to know one of the weirdest things about Arizona, and I don't know if it's a Joshua Dobbs thing, but James Conner was dead last in the NFL on qualifying running backs in targets. Dead last. That was a quality that like James Conner sure. had the ability to, to yes, do. he's very good at and it. And he was dead last. He has like something like six targets or something on the year. It's, it's wow. terrible. So, uh, really? yeah, I mean, that I, I looked that up this morning. So, James Conner, he's got 10. Okay, 10 targets. But he's, I mean, it was five. In five games. It was five I mean, week one and then one, two, two, and, and none. Right, in right. In the short game. Yeah, five targets over the last four weeks at the running back position for James Conner. I don't know why that is, but. It's misuse. It's, uh, it's just the way, you know, some quarterbacks, they, when you can scramble, yeah, that Dom, that's yeah. a big part yeah. of it, and he runs the football, and they do design runs. All right, that was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. With Uber Eats, get anything delivered? Well, almost, almost anything. Running backs? No. Mike gets them another way. <laughs> Flapjacks and baby backs? Yes, you can do that. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, 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 De Devon A. Chan officially placed on injured reserve today. Yeah. So I didn't get to uh, – I mean, I saw some of the highlights or lowlights hmm. and spotlights on hmm. Jason as he suffered. But um, officially on IR? Well, no, no, no. Officially going to be put on IR. They have not put him Dolphins on yet. Dolphins placed running back Devon A. Chan on hmm. injured reserve. Yeah, they're going to. But just I'm just saying transaction wise according to so Adam that, Schefter. Yeah. But transaction wise, uh plugging it in so that the platforms can have him put in my IR Jason, they didn't do yet. Do you know how much paperwork it takes to put a player on IR? Oh, I'm sure it's just I'm sure any minute now the waivers have gone through, he's gonna be 
officially through. James Conner, he's on IR. On I, IR. A transaction approved. Like, what is the process? There's Anthony like, Richardson, no problem. He's on IR. Transaction approved. How about Justice Jefferson and Nate Chan? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Because they were, they're waiting in the line. Yeah, that's true. That James Conner and Richardson were in. This, this tweet's only uh, it's less than an hour old. Jason. Oh, let me go check. I'm sure it's gone through now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and let us know. I checked before the show. I promise it wasn't. Yeah, I believe you. But I am breaking news. Yeah. Uh, nope. Both listed as doubtful. Just and I, I think that's fair. They're both doubtful to, to yeah, play. Um, Eckler, return to practice. Says there's a 99% chance he returns to play. I don't know if you guys saw the news from Deontay Johnson. He says he's 100% yes. healthy, ready to go. When yep. they asked him if he's going to play, he said, heck yeah. Next week. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Richardson on IR, you said it. James yep. Conner, Jefferson, and Achan. And then uh, Van Jefferson was traded to the Falcons for a 6-7 swap. Yeah, this is. Which I believe is that they call that the Claypool, right? The six seven swap. Was that what it was? I think it was. A, I think it was a, yeah, the Claypool or the uh, the Acres. But th I mean, this was great news for Tutu Atwell. I mean, my my gauge of that what the Rams situation was going to be. I thought that Van Jefferson would just be the third wide receiver out there, being the cardio king. But they said no. We we need to clear a path, uh, clear a path for for Tutu to be our third guy. And the snaps were so bizarre. Of Van Jefferson did not play this past Sunday even though the Rams played, I believe, every snap in 11 personnel. And they so they shipped him off. And there was, like, Mac Holland's snaps have been going down as well for the Atlanta Falcons. So not that I'm not saying Van Jefferson has fantasy value in Atlanta. It's just he might be taking Mac Holland's spot. I'll, I'll say that he doesn't. He doesn't take Holland's spot? No, that he doesn't have any relevance Oh, in yeah, no, yeah. It's worthless I'm for just, them. I'm just, just talking a NFL. Piece. Daniel Jones said Tuesday on the Up and Adam show that the neck injury he sustained is not the same one he dealt with last year. That's good. There was some optimism early in the week, but two minutes ago, uh, news came out that Brian Dayball said he will not uh, practice today and that he is more sore today. So, a little bit of uh, roller coaster happening. It would be Tyrod, right? Yes. Yeah. Which, uh, not the variable you want in place if you do get Saquon back this week is a switch at quarterback, but um, we'll see. He said it's the goal to play against the Bills, obviously. It's been a bad, bad, bad year. I mean, like, otherworldly yeah, it's been, levels of, of it's been bad. failure on offense. Anything else, Brooksy? You guys got anything? No, sir. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. So Mike spent up on DeMarcado. Yep. Spent up on Foreman, although we would we're still thinking Roshan has a yes. good chance of being back out there. Yeah, I I I think that Roshan is, I mean Roshan wasn't on our waiver wire, otherwise it would have I would have gone all in on that, but I think there is there is a chance that Jason he Jason brought this up of there's a chance that Roshan stays in Roshan Johnson's role and Khalil Herbert's role just turns into Foreman's role. Like there there is a chance that that happens. The, the interesting thing that we didn't really bring up because uh, I, Roshan is officially in the protocol, and what right. we've seen this entire season is whenever someone goes into protocol, they miss the first week. Pretty much, I, I think, it last I saw it was at 100%, but maybe maybe someone has cleared in week one. Um, however, this game, I, I had forgot when we were uh, doing the waiver show, they had their game on Thursday. So they do he does yeah. have a couple extra days – to clear protocol versus most people's normal week. All righty. Um, let's go ahead and move on. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, we are five weeks in. Everything's gone exactly according to plan. Mm -hmm. Just like ADP. This a segment will probably sound exactly like our most recent mock draft before the season. But we'll do it anyway. We're going to redo the first 24 picks, the first two rounds. If we were starting right here, right now, today, it is a kind of a way of saying, hey, what is, what is our rest of season rankings mm -hmm. for these first two rounds? And it appears, it appears that uh, the Fantasy Hitman has the first pick Excellent. in our Fantasy Draft redo. What a tough one. 
It's easy for me. It is Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey. He's back. Uh, I know he, he had a, a lower game. The The Dallas Cowboys fully sold out this past week to try and stop Christian McCaffrey and said, Brock Purdy, you will, you will be the one that if we lose, it will be because you beat us. And Brock Purdy said, that is not a challenge <laughs> for, for me. Happy to oblige. And my pass catchers, I will throw four touchdowns. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at his numbers, Mike, because uh, you, know, you and I are facing off against each other this week. Are you terrified? Of course. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. Christian McCaffrey represents – like you have, you have this year started some of the grossest running back twos I've ever seen. Correct. On a regular basis. Oh, with, yeah. With really no apologies. And it's been irrelevant because McCaffrey counts as, I don't know, Three One, players? Yeah, two players, and then it doesn't matter if you start Latavius Murray Mike or Rico Dowdle or A.J. Dillon because McCaffrey can fill in the blanks. I mean, a 12.8 game last week in our scoring – or uh, in in half point was um, his worst of the year, and that was good enough for RB15. So it's been really, really good. Yes. Way to give him the softball, Brooksy. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Jason, you are up next. Here's where it gets a little bit more oh, difficult. I feel like the number two pick is easy. There are two players that I am between for the number two pick. One of them hasn't played in, since week one, um, but has passed his bye week, which if we were drafting right now, that's a, a pro for it is. them. That's a huge um thing. And should be fully healthy, that being Austin Eckler. However, you know, we, we have seen players come back off of a high ankle sprain and struggle for – a month into their recovery. So we don't know how Austin Eckler will be. I, I think he's going to be excellent. I think he took extra time because of the bye week. But for me, it's Tyreek Hill. Yeah, dang it. Tyreek yeah, Hill it, it, is... That's, that's why I said it was easy. I mean, he's just been outstanding, unstoppable, in half PPR. He's averaging 23 points per game. That's insane. Um, a weak winner, a consistent asset. Uh, you're never going to be afraid to play him. So the number two pick... Tyree? Yeah, that would have been my selection at number three had you passed on him. However, I'm not going with the player you were contemplating. Uh, uh, Austin Eckler is not the pick here for me. It is Jamar Chase. I'm taking Jamar Chase at number three. Had the breakout game last week. The, the slow start to the season, uh, the injury to Joe Burrow, throw it all out. Uh, if I was drafting right now, Jamar Chase is you know, 19 targets last week, three touchdowns. He's a dominator at the position, and things are going to be better for Cincinnati. We've seen this year after year. They have an elite quarterback. Um, I'm going to take Jamar Chase in the wide receiver position there. I'm not going to mess around with the very thin running back situation we have with injuries, and you know, if it's not Christian McCaffrey, I'm going to go with Chase. Yep. All I right. Well, Mike, before you go ahead and make your next pick, we're going to take hold. a quick break so you can contemplate it. All right, we are back. Fantasy draft redo. McCaffrey, Tyree Kill, Jamar Chase. Mike, I can write in DeMarcado for you, or you can just make the pick. <laughs> I can't wait for him to fail for me, and I will have spent all my fab. Uh, I think so with, with McCaffrey, Tyree Kill, Chase off the board, this would be oh. breaking news. I see Jason shaking his is head. He on, is he on IR now? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Darren Waller. Oh, come Groin on. injury will not practice today. Ah! The groin. Goodness gracious. So he's off the board for your number four pick, too, Mike. Yeah. He. I thought about it. That offense. Oh, my God. That offense is so bad. Sorry. That's it. That's yeah. the end of that. Yeah, sentence. no, there's. <laughs> there, there is no however or but. It's, <laughs> no, it's. That so offense bad. is so bad. All right. At number four, believe, there's. I think I got three players who I think are worthy of being selected here. So it's just how do you want to play it? And I'm going to go, man, if if I really had the choice, I think I would – I'd go Cooper Cup. I think that mm. he – I think he's back. Uh, and he, high risk. Look, there's – I mean, even – Austin Eckler, who I'm sure will go in the next two picks, he carries risk as well. But Cooper Cup was back, and not only was he back on the field, he was right back to, hey, Cooper Cup, run, the offense runs through him, and, and, and Puka. 
But Cooper Cup is, I think, from here on out is just lock him in. He's a top five wide receiver. We we spent a lot of time on the hungry for more with our three picks, but my my honorable mention I was going to throw out there was Matthew Stafford because with Puka sure. Nakua, Cooper Cup, Tutu Atwell, Tyler Higby, Kyron Williams capable out of the backfield, like the regression to the mean, the positive regression for Matthew Stafford in terms of touchdowns. Yes, it is coming, and he's throwing the ball a ton. Their defense is like middle of the pack, like they have Aaron Donald and a bunch of young dudes, and so they're just. He's having to throw so much. I do think Matthew Stafford is a very interesting player the rest of the season. Yeah, and especially this week against our Arizona Cardinals, who yeah. uh, have dead last in, in pass rush percentage. Yeah. 17% of the dropbacks, they put pressure on the quarterback. Which is crazy, because it's like their their pressure to sack ratio has to be extremely high, because they actually do have a decent amount of sacks on Starting the season. Starting to fall apart. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, we got juiced up by Sam Howell. In yeah, week one. he held that ball. <laughs> So I, I'm going to I, – I, I said at the second pick I was between Austin Eckler and Tyreek Hill. I am going to take Austin Eckler, but it isn't a – even several picks later, it's not a easy home run pick. There's another running back. Yeah, there is. There's another running back that – I mean, really, if push came to shove and I'm on the clock, I might draft that running back over this running back, but – I do like this offense so much more. We know Austin Eckler. I mean, he's been a top three running back the last three years. He's been the number one running back. Uh, the The only week we saw him this year, he I think was the running back three on the week. It was dominant. So yeah, but but, but, but Mr. Uh, Josh Kelly filled in so admirably. <laughs> yeah. They don't need yeah. him. Yeah, uh, that's even uh, better. So yeah, I, I'm I'm going to take Austin Eckler here. I think he deserves to be a top five pick. And like I said, passed his by. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Austin Eckler is a great selection, and we know you know Mike Williams is out, and we're sitting there hoping that uh, Joshua Palmer, who's never done it, uh, steps up consistently, and Quentin Johnston, who's never done it, steps up consistently. Those aren't the answers. It'll be Eckler. Yeah. Uh, I am stuck between sexy and reliable <laughs> at the number six pick because sexy would be to kind of – Make the selection of Bijan here. Yeah, that was the other player I was. But but I do. But but my reliable no, Mike. It's not Stephon Diggs. Oh, it's David Montgomery. What? Yeah. I mean, I I'm I'm all in on Montgomery. That's when you when you look you, at wow when you look at the players right now that are not heading to IR or the bench, which is Devon Achan and Zach Moss. Montgomery is right behind. He's the next one behind CMC in points per game. The the Lions are one of the best offenses in football, whereas I do not have that confidence in Atlanta. Bijan obviously represents this ceiling, but like the Atlanta's offense, it it works dysfunction into a regular form. Like we thought, I mean, you guys, we all had Bijan in our DraftKings lineups last last week. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm seeing Bijan show up on buy low lit buy low list as though someone's going to sell him low. That's I don't not, think that's happening. But David Montgomery, like. To your credit, David Montgomery doesn't have a like. Isn't you're not going to have random games where Tyler Algier takes 17 carries, more carries than Bijan this past week. I mean, I, I understand that Jameer Gibbs is going to be worked into this offense, but it will not not really, like that. It will not be at the expense of David Montgomery's opportunities. David Montgomery through four games is on pace for almost 400 carries on one of the best offenses in football. I I'm going to. Do what I think is the smarter play. I'm going to take David Montgomery at oh, six. Oh, wow. Man, that's <sighs> – So you're telling me if you had B. John Robinson right now, you should go offer him in a trade for David oh, Montgomery because you'll man. get him. I think that – You have to have a plus. I, I'm just saying – Oh, for sure. Don't yeah, just yeah. go straight up. Get David Montgomery plus. I, I'm saying that it's not – it's not what anybody wants to do. But when the season ends, you might have wished you've done it. That's all I'm saying. Because if David Mon let, let, let me ask you this. Change David Montgomery's name to Jameer Gibbs. Same production, right. same same carries, same touchdowns. You would trade Bijan for Jameer Gibbs in two tenths of a second based on that production. Yeah, because this would be a young, explosive athlete that you haven't seen be mediocre for years. I don't like the last part. <laughs> that, because he hasn't been mediocre compared to his his offensive line, like his his metrics of of you know yards after contact 
and breaking tackle numbers, all of those things oh. have been a, uh, pretty elite for David Montgomery for I a while. And I demand you give Najee Harris that same that same leeway. You can you can give Najee that leeway, sure. Not saying that Najee's the not offensive good, line's but just bad. Saying, but you, I saw you tweet about broken tackles, and I was like, oh, yeah. Najee. Yeah, I mean, so hey, is, look at so you, is Tyler Algier. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because some players they don't need to break tackles because they just miss the the defender misses them. It, it is an ironic stat where when you break tackles, it means you did let a player get to you. Like, you know who doesn't have a lot of broken tackles? I'm sure Devon Achan. Cause yeah, he's not. He's untouched. He's just like. See I, you later. I'm just saying, like, and you you admitted it in the way that you responded there. Like, if it was Jameer Gibbs's name, you would do it. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's Devon, David Montgomery's name, and that is ignoring everything else. I like it. So I think David Montgomery is a a better pick for your team than Bijan. So gen so genuinely, Andy, would you say if you have Bijan, you should try to get David Montgomery? You really plus want something. this soundbite? You <laughs> no, want no, the no, soundbite? No, no, I want the I want the actual. <laughs> Advice, like if you think David Montgomery is better than Bijan, is it? I think they're back to back in this draft. I don't think you have to go do that. But if you, you disagree with get, me, but you could get extra. I'm sure. I'm sure you could get David Montgomery. Yeah, there's a world and, where that's the smarter move to make for and sure. And another player. Yeah, here. It, it's not like Bijan doesn't have Algier taking snaps. David Montgomery will have Jameer Gibbs taking some snaps. Both players will be the lead. Uh, both players can catch the football. David Montgomery is following up a season where how sexy is Jamal Williams, guys? Not sexy. And how many touchdowns did he have last year? 7,000. And how much better is this offense now? I mean, this offense better, is even yeah. better. I mean, yep. Mike's had Jared Goff as a starting quarterback every week, and I looked at the numbers because I'm facing you, yep. and I was like, this is like a starter. Yeah. So I think it's just accepting on face value what we have seen to to continue. So that's where I'm going. I think very – like, it, it, it won't work in every single league because if you were going to do something like that, and the the player who has or the manager who has Bijan has a strong upgrade to another starter position. I mean, I just, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Uh, I do really. I mean, it's it's hard not to take Stephon Diggs here, but the once once we're out of this range for running backs, it starts to get uh, pretty gross. And and it, the the production hasn't fully been there yet for Bijan Robinson. But the player is he's too good. Um so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take Bijan here. I'm gonna, yeah, I, I'm gonna solve my RB one problem. That's, that's right here. great. Yeah. Um Bijan Robinson. What what is the uh Kyle, you would know this maybe off the top of your head. What's the points per game comparison between Detroit and Atlanta? I'll look it up, but probably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's what speaking part, scientifically. I mean we we've kind of a lot. we've said that before, right? Like the um like, I don't know where Saquon's going to go in this draft, but the offense is going to be a factor. Yes. So, um, Jason, I think there are I think there are some really, really sneaky, smart, strong picks right here. There really are. Um, it, when I look through the list of names, if I was to say who I want on my team the most right now, um, you know, there's, there's sneaky names like, oh, like oh, my gosh. Yeah, they, they, sorry, Jason. Uh, Detroit, 29.6 points per game. Atlanta's at 16.6. .6. <laughs> so you talk about – like, I will bet my house Montgomery scores more touchdowns than oh, Bijan the rest sure. of the year. For sure he will. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't doubt that. But I do think that the ceiling is still higher with Bijan to – I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah. – I don't know if it is. Yeah, I'm not I, – I, I'm, I, I'm just glad he brought it up That's because that's spicy and it's, it's not – that's not hot takey just to be hot takey. I don't want to be the David Montgomery guy any more than anybody else would. But I do think it's the right call. And and Jason, you are on the clock. I, I think I know who you're going to select. Hmm. I don't know. So this will be very interesting. Uh, I, I did want to look up. So Jamal Williams last year was the running back eight total on the season. Oh, my gosh. Um, so the running I mean, back eight, and he has half of the half of ability the to break. I mean, David Montgomery's just looked the part. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so here I am. There's a bunch of interesting names here. I'm still not at the spot where I will look for a quarterback or Kelsey because I, I think did there wonder are, where quarterbacks would go. There are just too many really, really solid options, and I am in a position here where I'm looking at the safe option versus the gamble. Um, Stephon Diggs being the safe option, he's been unbelievable. He's been so good. Um, and the gamble being a guy who hasn't done a thing this year, 
and Jonathan Taylor. Uh, what? what? What we you're forgetting s- somebody. What? I'm gonna I'm gonna help you. Okay. You're forgetting somebody. Yeah, you are. You're forgetting somebody. But I mean, I'm not surprised because you don't love him like you think you do. Who? You're forgetting Brees. Oh no no no! I, I you'd put Jonathan Taylor ahead of Brees Hall. He he would he would one hundred percent be in the conversation here as well. Oh, but man. I do oh. look. I made Brees my start this of the week. Is not last going how I thought it would go. I made I made Brees my start of the week last week because it was very predictable to see that this Denver Broncos defense that can't stop anyone and just gives lanes for speedy running backs to smash. I still fear a weekly basis on the floor for Brees because of this Jets offense. How they, long do you think it's going to take JT to get up to speed? Uh, I, th- I, what, I think what, it happens quick. I think two, What if it's three weeks, though? What if it's three weeks of a timeshare and then you get in? Like, That's what I think it will be. Like Brees doesn't hit 50% in, for three weeks. Yeah, I mean, I, th- that could happen. Those two guys are... are to me, uh, neck and neck, I like both. But what we saw with Zach Moss, the utilization, not just the performance, but like the carries, the targets that were coming his way, um, was and, and the pace of play for the Colts, the fact that they weren't some slow offense. Like Steichen is running a, a good offense here, and you put Jonathan Taylor in there, I think he's going to be special. Um, that being said, I'm going to take Stephon Diggs. Ah, there it is. Yes. Okay. There it Diggs is. Diggs can't go any lower than this. He has been uh, so consistent, so reliable. Um, he has one week so far outside the top twenty-four. Only one week. Uh, w- one of those weeks were he was the the wide receiver fifteen. Otherwise, he's been a top six wide receiver every week. He's just awesome. They did come out and talk about Anthony Richardson is going to miss four to eight weeks yeah, with the injury. Time. Um, so that'll be interesting. And I do, I mean, Zach Moss is playing so well over five a carry this year that I wonder what the distribution and workload will be. He broke the Tennessee, uh, the record It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so that gives me some pause. Obviously Jonathan Taylor's a better player. This is perfect at number nine. And I know Brooks will say, go faster, go faster. Uh, that was his voice. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is perfect because the two players at nine, are two players I just saw in a trade, and somebody asked if they should do it. And I, I, I don't know the answer to this, and I'm going to decide my pick based on it. The number two running back in football right now is Raheem Mostert. Devon Achan is out for an extended period of time. He has been in, and Mostert is still sitting at two on the year. Mostert has eight touchdowns. He has seven on the ground. They're the most prolific offense that the NFL has seen since the sh- uh, greatest show on turf Rams. In terms of every measurable. 70 points will do that. Well, yeah, and, and beyond that, I mean, every single week they're just putting up, you know, 530 yards of offense or something per week. So you have the best running back on the best offense, Raheem Mostert. And then you have Brees Hall. Brees Hall, who is uh, more of a workhorse prototype, more total touches per game rest of the way. Dalvin Cook is cooked. And I saw somebody say, hey, do I go trade Mostert for Brees Hall? And... I could see that being the right move. I think my answer was, yeah, you probably should. I would. Um, but the variable thrown into the mix is this HN injury where, like, Jeff Wilson, his 21-day window is open, but it's he ain't there yet. And then Salvin Ahmed is going to play second fiddle to Mostert. Mostert seems like the most beautiful vase you've ever looked at. It is unbelievable. You, you, yeah. you stop and you gasp and you say, uh-huh. Oh, my oh that Voss. And it is on like, the – Like, what dynasty is this for? It is on the tiniest little pole. <laughs> it is standing – you know, it's like, do You're not – You're like, they should secure that with something more – Do s- not walk near that Voss. Now, you it's, say that because you're afraid he's going to get hurt. Yes, because he's always gotten hurt. Yeah, like Brees hasn't. Sure, but, I mean, I, I would generally go with the younger um, yeah. no, I get athlete it. versus I get it. The, the older one. I'll take Brees Hall. Running back, New York Jets. Okay, I like it. All right. And, man, Raheem Most. This is fun, by the way. Is this? I'm very entertained by the forcing us to make these calls because yeah. they this might as well be a trade episode. It, they, yes, that's what I was just going to bring up. This is like the ultimate trade value of what you believe in these players rest of season. Oh, man. Uh, the running backs – the run, the, I mean, Mo, Mostert's yeah. in the discussion. Yeah. Kenneth yeah. Walker's in the discussion. There, there are, there's three running backs who are definitely in the discussion. Tony uh, Pollard? 
Yeah. So maybe even four. But I'm going to I'm going to stick with wide receiver here. I'm going to take what I think is a layup. I'm going to take Keenan Allen. Really? Yes, I am. What do you mean, really? Well, no, I, he's been unbelievable. I feel like he's, it's an, he has overperformed a little bit. He, he, he's he's unbelievable. I think he is. Uh, I think with the Mike Williams injury, and I know they play two completely different parts of of the offense, but I think that Keenan okay. Allen is 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 just going to keep on doing what he's doing. You want to know what? Uh, <laughs> you want to know what's sitting next to that one vase? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's another beautiful vase in Keenan Allen that is. Um, He's got his, his, He's on the same his, stand, man. No, no his base is yeah, a, it's a little he's wider. He's thirtier. He he missed some games last year, but he, that was the first time in in a long quite time. a while. Okay, it's sturdier. It's sturdier, and he dude, he's going to eat. He's going to get so I, many receptions. I, I think from here on out, the wide receiver discussion is extremely interesting. Devonte Adams had the shoulder issue um, that recover that the recovery should be full very soon be prior to the shoulder injury he was absolutely dominating um you have aj brown who looks just like mm -hmm. you know the 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 dude um my, you could throw mike evans out there i mean mike evans was on pace for uh, uh 150s he's, he's uh, we've heard that he's good to go but he is yeah, he passes of, by a week, but he's a thirty-year-old coming off of a hamstring injury. There are a lot of different ways you could go, and and when you talk about the running backs, definitely Raheem Moster is is super valuable. He's going to be great. He's going to be the starter, but I would put him personally behind the Kenneth Walker, Travis oh, Etienne. Interesting. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to stick with the younger um, athletes that I think have the gas tank and ability to make it the rest of the season. If push came to shove and this was a real draft, that's how I would I, – I would I love Mostert. I want Mostert, but I would want whatever young stud running backs are available over uh, the aged veteran. And so here, <clears throat> Tony Pollard certainly in, in conversation. There's, there's so many good ways you could go. But I believe – and this is not an anti-Zach Moss take. Uh, I, I, Zach Moss has been excellent. But I really do believe Jonathan Taylor is a special player that we are forgetting how good he is. I think because it's been sight unseen, um, you know, we we're we're going to remember by the end of the year going like, oh yeah, he wasn't like he wasn't a pretty good player. I think he's gonna help people win championships. So I'm gonna take Jonathan Taylor here. I think if I didn't take him here, it seems like he would go several more picks. Uh, I I think uh, he'll go later in some people's mind. He wasn't he wasn't that superstar last year. That's part of it. Last year he wasn't. He was fine. Last, last year, year he was okay. Last year was a calamity of coaching and offense and quarterback that was a disaster. While he worked through the injury um, that that played him through the season that he got surgery for. Obviously he's coming back from that. But what I've seen was like. Coming well, into this new season, new coach, new quarterback. I mean, same si situation for him. Where there are those variables. Coming into this season, I was not super high on Jonathan Taylor. He, I, you know, this was a player that I worried with the quarterback and the new coach and all those things. But what I'm saying is, from what I've seen the first month and how they've utilized Zach Moss, how they've used this offense, uh, the scheme, I'm I'm really confident in the Colts' outlook. What are they going to do with Moss? I think Moss will become a thirty percent type of player I, I think by you know what whether it's two weeks from now three weeks from now Jonathan Taylor will be 70 percent of the running back room and and Zach Moss will be 30. All right at 12 I'm going to take Raheem Mostert okay running back <laughs> oh man this is to me this is a face I've made my decisions on some face value stuff and not the invisible hopes um, I am my my uh, David Montgomery and Mostert picks are two of the best offenses in football and the best running back on those teams. It makes yeah. sense. I don't I don't blame you for any of that because what I'm talking about with uh, ETN and Kenneth Walker is kind of the invisible hopes you're talking about, where it's like I'm just banking on youth to win out over the course of the season. Right now, they absolutely aren't. I mean, they're great, but they're just you know. 
they're not most yeah, most has been uh, really great. I like Etienne more than Walker rest of season. I think Walker, you know, the touchdown the touchdowns were there. The, the passing game work isn't and I like Charbonnet, so you know, Etienne was in contention there too, but I went with Mostert. Mike, you're up. It's uh it's Travis Etienne. I take my huge L on him. I thought that Tank Bigsby would be played a lot more. Uh he, I mean he's he's still the archetype that I thought he was of like if the big play doesn't happen, you you can get four games from Travis Etienne. Like we were so close to one happening. It didn't happen, so I'm not taking the the that away from him because he he does hit the big play with such frequency. But there will be games throughout the rest of the season where he it doesn't work and you end up very, very disappointed. But he has looked fantastic and I think that it it feels like it's a it's a matter of time for the Jags to get their offense fully clicked. This it it is it's not it's not totally in focus, but you can see what it could become. Yeah, that's the player I would have uh, picked here. I think there's a little bit of a tier, tier break. Kenneth Walker's in consideration, but I, I would agree with obviously both of you that prefer Travis Etienne um, ahead of him. Now, while Kenneth Walker is in consideration, I would not take him over the likes of AJ Brown and Devontae Adams. When I'm deciding between those two players, I'm going to take the guy who is currently healthy versus the one that will take yeah, another week fair. or two coming back from the shoulder. So I will be drafting A.J. Brown, wide receiver one for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yep, very good pick. I uh, was in consideration for my number 12 overall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the trigger here at 15. I'll take Travis Kelsey, tight end. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, the Like I said, the dot. some of those numbers, they haven't been as high as, as in the past. It's called unfair advantage. You get it every week with Travis Kelsey at your tight end position. Yep. Hey, hey, we're, we're speeding up here. It was, I I took Etn over Walker, but it's, it's just a a fraction. I I, I think they're both now now Pollard oh, Walker over Pollard. Oh man, Pollard. Because I I want to remind because yeah, Pollard. Yeah, no, I'm looking at yeah. I got to go back to my list. Yep, man. And also, so, the Kyron Williams is in the mix. Um, at running back. Kyron is he is such an interesting player because he's eighty seven percent of snaps. He is getting all the work. He's looked like a a competent starting running back. When you when I watch Kyron play, it's not, woo, that's a special player. It's no, he's he's the guy. He's adequate for it. But I mean, you want to talk about overproducing touchdown wise in, in yeah. terms of yeah. touchdowns, and you saw it. Uh, it where, where did what did, what happened with Kyron this past week? Because I don't think he scored. No, Is he didn't that, score. Yeah, so running back thirty. You know, thirteen for fifty three. That's a solid game. Only two catches. That's that's down from what he's usually putting up. But he will be kind of hot and cold and give you a solid floor. And then the spike weeks with the touchdowns. But he, I don't think he's going to come through with with top twenty four performances regularly if he's not scoring. Uh, the Pollard dude. The Cowboys' offense is so broken. Um, I, did you did you guys get a chance to? I Kurt Warner broke down some a few plays from the Dallas Cowboys from in like and he's bringing a quarterback perspective that we can't because all we see is is Dak throwing interceptions you know this past week and Kurt Warner broke down the routes of his of uh of, of what the play was and he's saying these players are not giving Dak a chance like the the actual offensive philosophy of what's happening there are small details missing that is that the mistake looks like it's on Dak but the the play that's being that that's being run is they're screwing it up. Well, I mean, look at this offseason. I mean, Brandon Cooks has not that has not worked out for them. Uh, Dalton Schultz, they left. Like we we say, okay, Ferguson's producing numbers, but yeah, in terms of targets, but the ex, all of the like separation metrics for Ferguson, maybe maybe Ferguson should have three more receptions, four more receptions a game just based on this offense. But he isn't Dalton Schultz. Um, it has been dysfunctional, and yes. they they miss uh, Kellen Moore. Yeah, so that was that was the the wider point was, yes, we are back to dunking on Mike McCarthy, <laughs> and it feels good to it be does. back. It feels because really he nice. was he was riding high and it was like, oh man, the Mike, we were, were we wrong on Mike McCarthy for those first four weeks? Nah, man, we were super right. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna take Kenneth Walker because I believe more in the Seattle offense than I do in what the Cowboys are putting out there right now. 
yeah, uh, good discussion. I'm gonna. This is easy for me. I was between AJ Brown and Devontae Adams last time around. Oh, there you Devontae go. Devontae Adams is here. I will take him. All right. Uh, I'm gonna take Tony Pollard, and yeah. um, you yeah, know, yeah, not yeah. overreact to a San Francisco matchup and a disappointing performance. I'll take Tony Pollard for the Cowboys. You got okay. I've I was wondering if if I was gonna get to share these numbers while I set up a pick <laughs> because these guys. This is incredible. What if I told you there's a quarterback who has 1,143 passing yards, 11 passing touchdowns, and then – oh, no, I lost my page. Sorry, let me get back to it. Uh, there's another quarterback who has 1,287 passing yards and 10 passing touchdowns. So that's, that's pretty Very comparable. similar. Very similar. Do you have any clue – who those two quarterbacks? One of those be. has got to be Kirk Cousins. I think no. one of those is Justin Fields. One of those is Justin Fields. Oh wow! The other one is Patrick. Yeah, that's Mahomes. What I okay. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, when you have two games, what? When you have two games like he has had, <laughs> that is unbelievable. That's a perfect uh, the, the way stats can get. Yes, I mean, you, like you, like you, if you can say Fields is playing as good as Mahomes because of his numbers, but Mahomes isn't playing up to Mahomes right now. Right. So Also, also funny in points that. Points per game, Mahomes is seven. Uh, Justin Fields has 191 rushing yards. Patrick Mahomes has 154. <laughs> so it's like these these two guys are right next to each other. I mean, that's in, in what I've always production. thought about with the yeah. Spider-Man gif. You know, or this, I've always <laughs> thought that's and Mahomes and, and Justin Fields. That's like, right. Wait, that's right. You're, you're the same. You're me. But exactly. At this point... You, I'm, I'm going to take the gamble that Chicago has figured it out and they have actually unlocked DJ Moore. So I will take him. Wow. Here. I will take him here. Wow. Now, you, now at this point, um, you're making decisions that go, you know, like Jefferson. I I'm, with with the weight on Jefferson versus the value. I can't take Justin Jefferson four weeks. At so he's this, not. Is he not a second round pick then? Not to at me. this point. At, okay. At this point of the season, heading into week. Six, missing four more. I mean, maybe, maybe you can stay afloat, but it, it, but it's also we don't know. Like IR is the mandatory of four games. All the reports have been very doom and gloom. Of after the four weeks is over, Justin Jefferson may not be ready to go. Yeah, it'll be it'll be tough. Um, I think both. I, I mean, obviously this is near and dear to my heart, but I think it's an interesting conversation with both Justin Jefferson and Devon Achan because it's like. He had such a small sample where obviously Justin Jefferson, you know, when he comes back, he's going to be awesome. Devon Achan, was it a big enough sample to be like when he comes back, right. he's going to be awesome again? You've got to you've got to call your shot there. You're not going to take him here over the, the players that are available while you know he's missing at least a month. I think we're at the point now where maybe you start to look towards the quarterback position, but there is there's a handful. Um, I, I, I think. To me, Josh Allen is the clear one. I um, I agree, yeah. But I don't know that he is different enough to take him over the stud other options. So I'm going to take a player that might surprise. I don't think it'll surprise Andy, but I I think it might surprise Mike. I believe he's going to be great rest of season. Um, his volume is assured. I mean, he led the entire NFL in rushing last year. I am not afraid of Josh Jacobs. I oh, think man. Josh... Josh Jacobs is going to be absolutely a top 10 running back rest of season. I mean, the last three weeks, running back 20, running back five, running back six the last two weeks, scoring, you know, an an average here of looks like 20 fantasy points. So, I mean, the, we, we got too skewed by the beginning of the year. He's a really good running back getting all the utilization. Nobody's better. Nobody's higher in targets, number one, in the NFL at the running back position this year. Uh, I'm going to go with Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver for the Lions. I uh, I would like to be attached to that top-tier 30-point-a-game offense. They're right. a machine, and they're going to use them. And with a couple players in contention here, uh, we're, we're one egregious end zone drop from being like, who's going to finish number one? Is it going to be Mark Andrews, or is it going to be Travis Kelsey? If Mark Andrews catches that, touchdown that went right through his hands he had a, he would have another monster week and he would just be compiling stats so I'm going to take Mark Andrews here I'm going to try and get a difference maker for the rest of the season yeah it makes sense I, th I think people are a little would be 
a little bit surprised if you don't have Mark Andrews to realize he's he's actually been really good. Yeah, um, he's not that far away from Kelsey, and we're talking on per game uh, basis. They both missed a game. That uh, he was probably going to be my pick here. Um, without that, I have a very interesting decision between two wide receivers, and they're very opposite to me. One is an older, aged veteran coming back from injury and Mike Evans, who has just been absolutely awesome. Baker's looked good. His targets, his pace, everything has been awesome. The other is Puka Nakua, who okay, it's like, good. okay, well, you know. I thought we were going to get through this and not even talk about him. That would be a travesty. He has been unfathomably great. Now you saw one game with Cooper Cup back, and he was very, very good. We have seen this system work with two wide receivers being dominant for fantasy. So it's a really – those two guys, it's really funny for me to decide between them. You also have, uh, to throw out some other running backs, don't forget about Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley, obviously, he's been injured. He's coming back now, similar to you know the Austin Eckler. Saquon was the running back six last year for a bad Giants team. Uh, they need him desperately. He'll, he'll receive a ton of targets. I'm going to, I'm going to let Andy have the chance to either take or bypass his guy I want a guy I am in love with. I'm taking Puka Nakua. Yeah, and that'll be over C.D. Lamb and Calvin Ridley and Metcalf. I forgot about C.D. Lamb. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, because it's been so bad. Yeah, it's, been, it's not been great. I would trade Puka for C.D. Lamb. So you could change the pick. Yeah, I, I'm glad I got to give Puka a shout out. Good job, Puka. You making the change? Yeah, I'm making the change. Yeah, C.D. Okay. Lamb is CD my Lamb. pick. Thank look, you. It, this is the hard part because you can't just look at who's <laughs> at the tippy top of the list. There, I mean, there's a lot of names we're forgetting. I've been wanting to take Josh Allen for like ten uh -huh. picks. I can't do it. My pick is Saquon Barkley. Uh, okay. I'm going to take Saquon Barkley. He's going to be back. He's going to be everything for the nothing that mm -hmm. is the Giants, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's, it's worth it to me. Like I'd take him if I could trade Kyron for Saquon right now. I would do that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The the name which I will choke back the vomit. <laughs> uh, I think I would take DeAndre Swift over Saquon and Josh Jacobs. Wowzers! Wow! Wow! The the I I feel like I have turned. Say I, that I, again. Which? What did you just say? I feel like I've... No, I want to hear what... Oh, no, I'll say it, yeah. I would take... I think I would take Swift over Barkley and Josh Jacobs. Okay. There, Tell I, you what, saying, I Kenneth think, Gainwell's not it. What a no, great... It's, that's, hey, that was the point is... Andy, what a great pick you made for Mike on the Mayhem episode. <laughs> that was yeah. the deucers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah, guys. Good work, guys. Good you work. Guys, you guys. I bet that roster Swift. is incredible <laughs> if we played it out. The, the transition is happening. Kenneth Gainwell, I saw him just hit the waiver wire, Andy, after... I mean, how many trades did you send trying to get? Oh, Gainwell I knew he was team? an expiring. Yeah. I mean, this was milk that had yeah. a couple <laughs> days left, and I was like, "You want a bowl of cereal? Yeah. You want a bowl of cereal?" That's, That's a funny I, analogy. He, yes, Jalen Hurts is going to vulture touchdowns. If they get to the one, it sucks knowing that your running back doesn't get a shot at it. But he, he's the guy, and it's a perfect match to to illustrate that point. Jalen Hurts has been vulturing touchdowns yes. already like crazy. And the the last he doesn't vulture him from the nine, <laughs> the right. eleven. The, the last four weeks, DeAndre Swift running back two, running back thirteen, running back eleven and eleven. Yep. But you forgot the golden rule, which is that if you don't say, draft Swift, if you say DeAndre Swift's name three times hey, in a conversation, his season ends. I will accept that too. <laughs> and I dropped Gainwell, so his season's definitely <laughs> over. All right, sorry, Eagles fans. Here we go. Thursday Night Breakdown. It's a mini Megla show today. Uh, yeah, there, I, I, I may or may not have forgotten about Thursday Night Preview. <laughs> I, well, was this, this I was timing this up the whole time to end after the, you know, top 24 and Brooks is, you know, making fun of Brooks saying, hurry up. It was yeah. so fun. It was so fun and enlightening, I think, to go through those players. I mean, uh, Josh Allen not picked. Calvin Ridley not picked. Puka picked and then not picked. Um <laughs> Pick, Jeff, pick, Jefferson, and Jefferson and Evans. I traded and, him for CD Lamb. And Laporta. I mean, Laporta would be in the next round, maybe, um, for what he's represented. All right, Thursday night preview. Guys, you ready for this? Let's uh 
let's get out there and and see Russell Wilson on the field again mm. in prime time. What can the Denver defense? Oh my gosh, your hand was on the board. You thought I was like no. Oh, you thought I was doing an <laughs> almost upset. <laughs> I I, didn't I was looking for this. Unlimited. Uh, I don't. I mean, you're you're already. I believe I'm four for four. Yeah, I mean, you're you're yeah. crushing with those. You're already heated up with with the uh, the David Montgomery take. So I thought we were getting something super spicy. Oh yeah! Thank no. goodness. No, yeah, <laughs> Denver <laughs> one and four, Kansas City four and one. The over under is forty eight, and Kansas City's ten and a half point favorites. Not enough. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. I think they can cover. So, I think D Denver might cover this. The, I mean, obviously, NFL teams when when push comes to shove, especially in prime time, they're going to step up. They're they're all capable of winning any game. The worst team can beat the best team any game. Um, you know, last year I think was it the the Texans that beat the Chiefs? Uh, one of one of the worst teams. Oh, the Colts. The Colts yes. who were a calamity and a disaster beat the Chiefs last year. Any given Sunday or Thursday. Um, it, it can happen. That being said, you have a terrible Broncos defense against That's the problem against Patrick Mahomes, and then you have a dysfunctional Broncos offense against a really super good defense. And I think this defense is a major problem for Patrick Mahomes for fantasy value. I was wondering about that. Yeah, because uh, they they might be able to just carve them up. Yeah, real early. Maybe the running game gets going. A defensive touchdown. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe that Patrick Mahomes, what we've seen so far this year, he hasn't looked his best, and I think he'll play better than he has been. But I also don't think he's going to be the the type of quarterback for fantasy that is – he was the number one drafted ADP quarterback. I don't think he finishes the season in the top three. I wonder how dysfunctional this offense would be if Travis Kelsey didn't play. Oh, man. Because they, they lead the league in drops. I believe it's 13 drops so far. Um, Rashi Rice has looked good in recent weeks. Also, tons of drops. Um, Kadarius Tony, he's he's a bit part player. Justin Watson, bit part player. MVS is out there, never gets the ball thrown his way. Just just Sky Moore, goodbye Moore. I mean, oh, this is got him. I mean, <laughs> Pacheco's been a bright star. He has, yeah. and it should be again. I mean, the the Broncos defense vulnerable on the ground. Pacheco trying to. Trying Jericho's to send a be... message to the ground every time he's running. Yeah, he. <laughs> His... I love the gifts that come out about Pacheco's running style. It's so aggressive and angry, and it, it, it seems unhinged. It's violent. Yeah, and it's, but it's like violence that doesn't know where it's going. No, no, that's why this <laughs> cartoon sound effect. It's the the wheels are turning, and they're just ready to just explode into some direction like, gravity should be gravity for every person which means that you should only be able to hit the ground with your feet going down the same level of <laughs> hardness as anybody else and yet it seems like he's on like different gravity i think yeah. most people when they run they use their muscles to lift their legs and then let gravity bring it back down <laughs> he is actually shoving his legs back down every time as hard there are divots out there but pacheco's a great he's start gonna be this great week. yep Mahomes has never lost to the Broncos. I'm still, yeah, I'm still playing Mahomes. For and sure, then, for um, sure. and Kelsey. Kelsey, and that's that and is, Kelsey that's was it. limited on Tuesday. Take a look and see if we got a Wednesday practice report yet, guys, because they'll probably keep him limited, and mm -hmm. he'll probably play. Yeah, I I do expect him to play. You better I play. play. <laughs> I do expect him to play. We've we've been telling <laughs> fantasy managers you need to be prepared to pivot. Um, there are. I wasn't of, listening to that. There are plenty of plenty of good options. Can you just play Noah Gray in a spot? I think you might be able to. One hundred percent. That was one of the pickups we talked about. Grab Noah Gray. But the nice thing is, because he is Thursday night football, if you need to pivot, you'll be able to put him on your IR and pick up a waiver wire tight end. You got Logan Thomas out there. Cole Komet could be out there. Hunter Henry can be out there. Noah Gray is a fine replacement if they aren't out there. You've got other options. Obviously, no one's going to be Travis Kelsey. Um, but be prepared to pivot if he doesn't play, if his ankle swells up. Okay. On the other side, tough matchup, Chiefs Dude. defense, dominating quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. They're also at home is, on prime time. Is there anyone on the Denver Broncos that you have any sense of confidence to Not play this confidence? week? Confidence? No. Not one single player. There's if, a shot I'd take. A uh, shot? 
I'm sure we would take the same shot. Is it Jaleel? It, it would be Jaleel McLaughlin. Yeah, that is the shot. That's it. I, I, I and I will take a shot before I take that shot <laughs> right, just to be able to let it go down. You're, you're going to need more than one. I'm going to need a bottle. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been bad for everyone. <laughs> It's been bad for everyone. Um, what about Marvin Mims, Jason? Marvin Mims. Have you already gone crazy this week? I did. Yes, he okay. uh, he gets a max of twelve routes run. Um, that's smart. <laughs> You've got um, Jerry Judy has scored ten fantasy points three weeks ago. That was in one game. Uh, hasn't gotten back there yet. Hasn't been good. The quarterback hasn't been good. Cortland Sutton. We talked about this last week. He was his fantasy expectation was way past the wide receiver 40, even though he has touched down his way into some relevant weeks. But we said, avoid him in a, you know, the Jets were a good defense last week. Don't start him. And he went out and put up 1.8 fantasy points. Look, you look at the Chiefs and you say, they're going to have to keep up. They're going to have to throw the ball. But you could say that with everybody who's played him this year. The Chiefs defense is legit. You need to start viewing them as a bad matchup because they are a bad matchup. And it's hurting Patrick Mahomes. It is hurting Patrick Mahomes because he doesn't need to do as much. So I like Mahomes in this game because he's Mahomes, uh, but he isn't going to be the Mahomes of the last two years. Pacheco is great in this game. Kelsey, and then that's it. I don't want to play a single Broncos. Yeah, if you're watching this game and you have a Chiefs player because you're starting them all, you really want a special teams touchdown from Marvin Mims. Mm-hmm. You want, uh, I don't know, like a MVS fumble return for a touchdown. Yeah. Sometimes just a couple points from the other side, Mahomes might have to pass a little bit more. That's what you're dreaming of. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, in a two quarterback league, you're probably starting Russell Wilson. Um, and there are situations look, look. he's the quarterback eight. Yeah, no, yeah, he he has somehow been okay. Thank you, Marvin Mims. Um, and uh, you know, there's there's situations in reality where you'd have to start Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton because you just don't have other mm-hmm. options. You lost. Jefferson or whatever. Um, if you had to start one of those two players, which one are you starting? Just between Judy and Sutton? Yeah. Judy. Probably Judy. I think I'm going Sutton but for the you, touchdown. Yeah, you chance. might go up the touchdown. I, I'm a, I, I'm pivoting to another shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of the show. I'm going to Disneyland. The start of the week tomorrow. Fantasy face-off. And Jason, you're not getting shamed. I am not. I I'm dominated. not getting shamed. We finally got Mike. See you then. You did it, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.